Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. Today I'm here with Waterford goalkeeper Noel Corbett, and we're here to answer your questions that we asked for you guys on social media using hashtag Noel. So, uh, yeah, no, just the first one. Um, Connor Cairns says, Does he know Cork City are the biggest club in Munster? Hashtag Ask Noel. Yeah, I suppose you can't really argue with them. They have been over the last two or three years, obviously doing the double last year. Um, but um, hopefully, you know, it cause them a few problems next year. Maybe create a bit of a rivalry there. And it'd be good to have another team in, in Munster causing a few problems. And I'm sure um, they'll be looking forward to playing us. Obviously, two really good sets of fans. Um, so I think it'll be one for the fans to play up then it'll be uh, a good environment a good game to be playing and I think next year ok well Connor I hope you're you're happy to answer to that question let us know what you think in the comments um, Louis Gallagher and Anthony O'Shea have a very similar question so I'm just going to forward them both in together um, what are you looking forward most to um, to most now you're in the Premier Division hashtag Ask Noel. what is he looking forward to most playing for the Blues hashtag Ask Noel. Yeah, I think it's going to be extremely competitive division next year. Obviously, with ten team league, you're going to be playing a really tough opposition every week. And um, three teams going down, obviously, um, really strengthens up the rest of the league. And um, obviously, obviously with Waterford, we're going full time, so it's going to be a step up for me in terms of playing in the Premier Division every week and adapting them to full time football. But obviously, looking forward to it. we've managed to sign some really good players and establish Premier Division players and been able to keep a lot of the players from last year. So. Um, I think it'll be a challenge for everyone, but I think uh, everyone's looking forward to it. Um, ready to get going, really, I think, now at this stage. Right. Anthony, maybe, uh, let us know your thoughts to um, Noah's answer there. Uh, Owen O'Carroll, uh, I believe this is a friend of yours, uh, he says, Are the rumours true that Clona Slee are erecting a statue of Noah outside Hickey's pub? Hashtag Arsenal. Uh, I, I don't know about that, no, I think they're more inclined to maybe go for jail, as like he decided. Five or six years ago, to go play off, go play with Offaly GA. So, I think um, where I'm from, it's very much GA oriented, unfortunately. And another problem in, in Ireland, what we have at the moment, where everything's going GA as well. But look, um, he might get on before me. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cameron Gordon says, "Who is his favourite keeper, past or present?" Um, well, I'm a United fan, so probably as far as when I started watching football, it would have Michael. But I think. Um, being able to see what David Hay has done over the last probably what, five years, six seasons in my life when he probably started and everyone doubted him and now he's obviously probably turned into the best keeper in the world what we've seen over the last few, few games at United so I think someone that you can relate to makes a big difference and I think it's hard to say someone like Manuel Neuer when he's six foot six and a bit like an absolute beast so um, I think when you can relate to Hay when he's probably six foot two, six foot three and his game is all about distribution and you know, agility and when you can go and work on them things like we're not all dead six foot six, you know. Yeah. So I think um for me someone just relate to I think he's probably the best keeper in the world at the moment, so obviously it helps Would you would you say he's but we had a little bit of an argument about this between the lads. Would you say he's better than Schmeichel? Even though or would you have to wait for yeah, his career to say that? It's hard to know, obviously the premiership's been completely built up these days, obviously with media and everything and he's a, you see him every week, obviously he's a United fan. Uh, obviously when I was my first memory of Schmeichel was the Champions League final, you know, I probably would have only been about six. And so when he obviously was in his prime, I wasn't able to see it every week, so yeah. I've obviously only seen highlights. But I, for me, now in the moment, I think that De Gea is, I think Schmeichel is a different type of keeper, but it's been great to see how De Gea has evolved and got better every season. Um, I so, think Schmeichel was more of a leader, whereas uh, yeah. De Gea does more with his actions. Yeah, he, he does, yeah. Uh, Good example of Ernest I think he is. It's probably hard to be a leader. It's a big club, and he was that one earlier on. I don't think that team probably doesn't have one at the moment. Um, but yeah, so Michael definitely was a leader from what I've seen. But he had Roy Keane as well, so I think the yeah. times back then were a lot different. You know, you didn't have the whole media side of things were as big. The money wasn't as good in the game. But yeah, I think it's a debate for anyone. I think it's maybe for more the older generation that seen Michael week in week out or know more about him. But I probably didn't see enough of them to compare him to the Hay like, like Neuer like you don't see Neuer every week because we don't watch the German league I see the Hay every week so for me that's probably why he's probably the best keeper in the world in my opinion um, but again everyone's, everyone's opinion is different it could be someone that intrigued in the Spanish league might have someone or the German league because yeah. you're seeing him every week like they're staying it depends on 
if you can relate to that keeper in terms of distribution, whatever, you know, it's, it's whatever your opinion is on, on what you want from a keeper again. Like if you want your keeper just saving shots up the head, if you want them like Neuer coming out sweeping, it's probably going to be Neuer. So it's, um, it's a good debate in fairness. There's a lot of good keepers. I think it's, you can watch the Premiership week in, week out now. Like Joe Hart's on the bench. It's, um, there's a lot He's of competition. He's really not down here. Uh, yeah, he struggled in fairness. There's, um, there's a few like that, but it's football, isn't it? Like one bad year, two bad years, and you keep dropping down the levels, and you don't know where you're at. Your head's probably gone mentally, so it's a tough position like that. In fairness, when things aren't going your way, it really goes against you. So it's yeah, a, it's a mental game. Would, yeah. you, would you feel that in the crowd? So say you've made a howler once in a game. Does it every time it's balking me? Would you be like? Well, UCD, you could, well, UCD wasn't too bad because there wasn't too many fans there, but. Um, yeah, my first season, we went up to Finn Harps and they were going doing well at the time. And um, I made a mistake for a goal, had a howler more or less, kind of was my fault. And there was two or three hundred fans right behind me, dogging me out for the rest of the game, you know about it. But like, there's not much you can do, you just got to deal with it, you know, you know you've made a mistake. And Would you just clear your head? Like, it's hard. You, just try to at least. You have to at least, yeah. You kind of just, some people have triggers of, of like back when I was younger and you know you'd make a mistake someone might tell you you know tie your shoelaces or something like that just to clear your mind but you know in the back of your head you're after making a mistake it was your fault solely and the fans behind you don't help and there's obviously numerous grounds around the league of Ireland where the fans are right on top of you so you're not going to be able to get away with it you just maybe got to do the next thing right once you do that you might settle back down but it's not going to change and you can't change you just got to try and affect the game it's, it's kind of like a striker making you know missing a sitter you gotta score the next one, yeah. You gotta score the next one, but it's probably the hardest thing about being a keeper, probably your mental strength. And um, some keepers deal with it better than others, and some people again have triggers or ways of dealing with it. But it's, um, I'd say it's a lot harder in Premiership or yeah. Championship when you're forty or fifty thousand fans shooting down at you that you're after costing your team a goal. So um, it's just part of being a goalkeeper, really. Isn't it? This is the game, I yeah. Um, okay. Um, a tweet here from Stephen Rose at Rosie nineteen eighty says if Niall could sign one other UCD player for Waterford Football Club, who and why? Hashtag pass Niall. That's a tough one. Yeah, um, spot here. Yeah, had a had a good team last year. Fairness, yeah, we were probably uh, unlucky, but to finish third. Uh, obviously, George he's scoring seventeen goals last year. I think he's. Been fairly sought after at the moment. I don't know what he's doing, but um, he's definitely someone that you could add to any team. You got Gary O'Neill. Obviously, we missed him last year. You could tell him. You could tell we missed him. I think he 15 games, 17 games, and he was a big loss. And and Maxi at the back. I think we could make a good five-side team. It'd be hard to pick one. And um, there's a few unknown players there. Maybe that aren't in the spotlight as much. That do a lot of work. Greg Slogger, you know. We've, Two good young centre halves. Two we had two good young centre halves. So uh, last year, so I don't know. I, I struggle to pick one to be honest. Uh, I think there's a good core of young players there, so they'll be good next year. But uh, I don't know if they'll be coming with me or not. Yeah, you, you won't pick one from now. Ah, don't think I can. Yeah, <laughs> I'll upset someone right here anyway. But um, maybe Georgie or maybe Georgie seventeen goals last year. Go with Georgie there. Go Georgie seventeen goals last year. Rosie, we're going with George. <laughs> um, and then Adam Hayes, uh, APH, uh, at APHCOTV, hashtag Ask Noel, how do you reckon the Blues will do next season? Also, have you seen my vlogs? Come on, the Blues. I have, yeah. One of the UCD lads actually showed them to me. I think I've seen one or two when we played them last year away, so I've, I've seen a few of them. They're very interesting, in fairness, doing well. Um, um, this, he seems to be enjoying his work there, but. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a tough league next year. Um, obviously, you want to be as high up on the table as you can be possibly. I think talk to anyone, they're going to be chasing Europe. That's everyone's goal at the start of the season. I think you don't want what happened with Limerick last year. Obviously, anything could happen. They won the first division, looked like the best team uh, I played against when we were in the first division with UCD. You know, they're rampant, one of them. It's got about 15, 20 points in the end, and they struggled last year, obviously new managers so things like that obviously can happen that's what football is like it's quite fickle so um, I think it'll be week week to week base you know determine maybe after the halfway point where your goals are from them but 
I think there'll be a benchmark of points after every round. There's going to be four rounds now, so it'll be uh, it'll be it'll be quite difficult next year, week in, week out. I can't really say. You know, we have to get Europe, and it's a poor season. It, it's it's hard to know really. Um, new group, new players. So it'll, it'll take time to gel, but I'm sure we'll be looking like there. everything this season. Hopefully, it's not as bad. Yeah, hopefully, not as bad. Um, maybe the way they're playing the last three games, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kick on from them. But, um, but it's always the case with some clubs, like you, you, you'll get an influx of players, and sometimes they take a while to adapt, some just settle right yeah. in. I think if you look at League of Ireland, it happens every year. Every team, they maybe Dundalk last year kept, other than probably Finner, kept most of their team. I suppose the two lads going to England didn't help. And, that obviously then aided Cork and kept a lot of their players. I think when you're up the top half of the table, you can obviously you're only looking to improve your squad. You're not really looking to you're not worried about lads leaving because they obviously want to stay with you because you're challenging for a league. But um, yeah, when I was at UCD the last few years, obviously you would have the same team there every year. You might lose one or two lads, so I, it'll be new for me as well and um, a new challenge for me. But um, as you said, it happens at every team. You know, you want to make three or four signings when lads are on one year contract things don't work out they're, they're going to move on it's just the way the league of Ireland is so every team has to deal with and we obviously have experienced lads in our dressing room that are used to that so it'll, um, it'll be a challenge for some and some lads then again are just used to it really yeah now um, this is a big one now uh, keeping on the deck the Facebook account got in touch with us and said uh, Noel question if you could put one quote out to the world that is aimed at young footballers that acts as advice or motivation to them what would you say and what would the quote be and there's another question asked that we would like to ask that's a big question isn't it um, I don't know really like a, yeah, I would just enjoy it um, it's what it's about at the end of the day like it's I think when I was 14, 15 went away with a team and was quite nervous going away playing. It was a big game for me, and someone just told me it's just a game of football. At the end of the day, you enjoy doing it, so don't be worried about it. You know, so I think no matter what age you are or who you're playing with, you know, if you can find that enjoyment in it, and where you're looking forward to going and playing, and it's a it's an escape from everything else in your life. I think that's probably what everyone should look for in the game. I think at the moment, um, it's a uh, it's more about enjoying it. Obviously, if it's your career. It's, it's different. You want to succeed, but I think for for anyone. It's and would you say rather than making the huge move straight away, would you say you know know your level and then build? Yeah, maybe so. I think everyone obviously has an ego, and it's hard maybe to take a step back and um, to go and enjoy it. But um, sometimes you have to do that if it's a case that it's going to better you long term. Um, I think you should once you're enjoying your football. I know everyone wants a squad and teams want a squad, but you know if you're on the bench or maybe you're not impacting your team, I think there's nothing wrong with taking a step back, maybe to go play week in, week out, or go on loan or whatever you can do, just to just to feel that like enjoyment again. Everyone loves playing football. It's just well, like it's the most played sport in the world, you know, for a reason because you get so much enjoyment out of it. So I think it brings a lot of people together. Exactly, yeah, um, for sure. And I think if you can if you can find that somewhere, then great. Um, that's what you should strive for really so what would, what would be the, the final quote then it would probably be just just enjoy your football don't make any hasty decisions you know I think enjoyment is fulfilment really at the end of the day that's perfect um, and then they have a second question what motivates you to play football what's the driving force or reason you do what you do professionally question mark and then it says best luck with the answers now we'll be sharing to a quarter of a million people so it, would be, it better be a good one <laughs> Hopefully, I helped there, but um, yeah, just you want to do well. It's something that maybe you enjoy doing. Again, like I said, fifteen times there. Um, but no, um, things wanting to succeed at something. Maybe you know, it, it, everyone's different. You know, if it can provide an income or if it can, if it can, you know, mentally get you get you stable or release you from um, whatever else is going on in your life I think football is that avenue it's obviously helped me through college and obviously now moving to Waterford it's, it, it's going to be a career path for me for the next while anyway so I think you know just wanting to better yourself as a person and um, it helps in so many aspects and you know I think football's great for that obviously you're mixed with the team and you have the chance to succeed and you have the chance to better yourself as a person I think um, it's what, what drives me to play football at the moment anyway Okay, they they are keeping on the deck. I hope uh, 
Just enjoy that and uh, got what you're looking for there. Yeah, just want to ask you, you were at UCD for such a long time and you know we were talking obviously before there uh, about how to do things so much diff- uh, differently. How would you explain that to someone from the outside looking in almost? Yeah, I suppose if you look around the league, there's a lot of lads that have came through the system and for anyone that's not been in it, it is quite different. Um, from Personally, I came in at my leaving start year, so the 19th was just starting to happen. I was involved in a few reserve games, nothing major, so it would have been a case that I did my leaving start and was hoping to get a scholarship, which thankfully I did. Um, did four years then, so I had a mix of playing 19s. And then because of UCD, they have a structure in place of like Leinster Senior League, first team 19s. Um, I was obviously able then, there was three keepers ahead of me, time Jerry Barron, uh, Mark McGinley and Conor O'Donnell. So it was a case that, look, I wasn't going to get much game time. Do you mind taking a step back just to you know, play some, some games? And I was thankful for it because it gave me the opportunity to play week in, week out. And some lads have even done that in our squad this year, or last year, sorry. Um, they've just taken a step back to go play because the opportunity is there you're playing week in week out and then you have the opportunity then maybe to go back up to the first team that summer when the Leicester League season is over so I did that and then obviously UCD got relegated three seasons ago so that gave me the opportunity to uh, play and that's what I've done the last three I've uh, been able to do the last three seasons and uh, spend first division at UCD so it's different and uh, we play college games I know at the moment a lot of the lads are in the middle of college games so you don't really get an off season so you're playing football for 12 months you come in then in January for pre-season and you're still playing college games so pre-season for UCD would be you know maybe one week hard training but then you could have a game the next week and, and then you might have another hard week but then you could have two games that week you're playing Wednesday every other Wednesday and trying to fit training around that I think last year I played two friendlies because we had that many college games first game of the season we played Cabin Teeley out there uh, we had played the Collingwood Cup, which is the big one for us, and we played Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so none of us were even able to play the first game on Friday, so we played a lot of the 19s. Um, but you know, it's a good avenue for any young player if you want to further education. Um, you can see a lot of teams are doing it, like Manu doing it with Pats. Um, there, there is opportunities there, and um, it's been great for me. I've obviously fond memories, got the experience Europe with, you know, it's, it's, it's been. Uh, it's been great for my career and it's helped me with the next move so um, can't be thankful of them. Some people probably don't have a good perception if they haven't been involved in the in the system, they don't really understand it, but it gives young players the opportunity to play at the highest level. You know, some players when you're in a professional club, maybe like a Pats or Rovers, you don't get the opportunity because the can the manager take the risk on you when you're 22, 23, even lads what I think we played a sixteen year old last year. Has get the opportunity to play. play yeah, I think it would be different with like a bigger club because they're looking for results almost instantly. It's the yeah. same with the Ireland national team setup, whereas they're looking for results instantly. So it's hard for Man O'Neill to say bring in. Of course. Do you know that sort yeah. of way? And uh, what I was going to say to you lastly was uh, another question was um, now you're obviously going from part time to full time. Are you looking forward to the fact that you're going to be training all the time now? Definitely. I think anyone in the league of Ireland that's playing, that's what they want. You know, when we're playing football, if you can make a living out of it or uh, enjoy it while you're doing it you know training every morning just it's the first time I've been able I'll be able to just solely focus on football you know the last five years I've been doing college as well so you're trying to balance the two uh, obviously usually would help you in that but um, I'm sure there's plenty of lads out there working and playing football and you know that can be quite stressful and hard on your body so I think now you're just solely focused on football so you don't really have any excuses so I think you can't not be looking forward to it. It's full time football at the end of the day. It's great that there's clubs in the League of Ireland that can give you the opportunity to do that. So I think um, it's in to get going and looking to start well in January and kick on from there, really. Yeah, and just lastly, what was it that made you want to go to Waterford? Was it the manager? It was a bit of everything. Team? Obviously, playing against them last year, we played it four times last year. You could see how professional the club was. Um, and then speaking to as many people as I could, Gary Comfort down there, he's from Leash, so I got a chance to speak to him. Um, uh, speaking to Pat, speaking to, to Alan Reynolds, the manager, you know, he, it was it was all good. They have a structure in place, they have a good club, everything from the RSC, you know, little things like that make a big difference. It's a good city, it's got good fans, you know, we played them last year, there was two and a half thousand there, close to that, I think. And, yeah, they travel well in numbers. I was at they a Cabo yeah. game and there was a fair few. Yeah, and they've got a great home ground. You know, it makes a difference. Um, great facilities down there. I think it was all adding up and no one really had anything negative to say. Um, 
So, and for me, it was kind of obviously with college, I was weighing up do I go and work and play maybe part time football, do that for another year or two. But I think the opportunity was too good to, to refuse. You know, it's, it's a great team that are obviously signing the caliber of players they have so far and going to seem to be going in the right direction. So, and that's probably what swayed me to head down south. Oh, brilliant. Well, thanks very much for coming on. Uh, sure. and you've answered all the questions that we uh, could have asked. Uh, guys, thanks very much for watching. Uh, we got to you 1K subscribers. These are all absolute legends. Uh, Noah's actually a subscriber now as well. Um, as well as that, if you like any of these videos, do give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, get us to subscribe there. We're going to get 2K now. That's what we're on the road for now. Um, if there's any other players that you'd like to see us uh, get on, get in touch. And if you'd like to come in on the couch yourself as well, uh, get in touch. Thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Have a great day.